Welcome back to our course on PSC 2018. In this section we're going to start with one of the most common problems that you get in images and that is removing blemishes. We're going to start with a very tiny blemish. In fact I'm going to go back to that dog that we saw earlier on in the course and talk about removing the specks from its face. Then we're going to move up to some relatively large blemishes, even to the size of sort of small objects. There are some alternative ways of removing objects, as we'll see later on in the course. But for the moment, I'm going to treat them as though they are all large or small blemishes. So first of all, I'm going to do a quick review of the guided edits. Then we're going to look at using the spot healing brush. And we're going to use the spot healing brush both for blemishes and to deal with one of the other common problems in photos, and that is removing wires and cables. And then finally in this section we'll look at using the healing brush to remove a larger object. If you have a blemish in a photo, one option is to crop it. And if the blemish is somewhere on the photo that you can lose, then cropping is a very straightforward option. But very often when we're talking about a blemish, we're talking about something which is within the photo, within the part of the photo that you want to keep. If you go to the special edits in guided editing, there is a specific guided edit for scratches and blemishes. It's that one. And as you can see in this case, note the scratch on the photo being removed. That's very similar to the wire removal that I'm going to demonstrate later in this section. So if you want to try the guided edit first, that's a good place to start. And it's worth noting that some of the other guided edits, notably the Perfect Portrait guided edit, also use spot healing to remove blemishes from somebody's face. But let's go back into expert editing and do the removal in expert mode. First of all then, zoom in to the part of the dog's face with the little specks on it and then go to the enhance group top right hand corner the healing brush tool group we have the healing brush currently selected we need the spot healing brush now the key thing here is the brush size and when you are fixing little blemishes like this it's best to try to find a brush size that's just slightly bigger than the blemish I'm only going to deal with one of the blemishes here and what I do is I hover over the blemish with the brush. You can see that's quite a bit bigger than the blemish, that particular brush, so I'm going to reduce the size. Now, generally speaking, I don't use keyboard shortcuts, but there are a few, and I'm now going to explain a couple that I do use, and that's the keyboard shortcuts for reducing and increasing the size of a brush. They're the square brackets on the keyboard, and the left square bracket will make a brush smaller, which is what I'm hitting now, and a right square bracket will make it bigger. Now I'm going to go for that size of brush. And once I've hovered over the blemish, what I'm going to really need to do is to click. Let me click once now, and there's the blemish gone. Now before I move away from that, Another one of the options that you can see in the tool options for the spot healing brush is the type. And the type determines how the pixels you've clicked or wiped over are being replaced. And there are three options. The first of them is proximity match, where basically PSC looks at the color of the local pixels and bases the color of the pixels it's replacing the blemish with on those close by colors. The second option is create texture, where again PSE looks around the area that you're clicking or brushing and creates a texture from the surrounding colors. And then the third option is content aware. And what PSE does if you select content aware is that it looks more generally not just at the color of the pixels around there, but at any sort of shapes and edges and lines and tries to use that knowledge in order to effectively replace the pixels that you're clicking or wiping over. 
There is no universal best choice. Proximity match isn't always best. Content aware isn't always best. You need to look at each individual situation and work out which one works best. And you will find after a time that you start to look at blemishes and you can pretty much work out which one is likely to work best in any given situation. Now there's one other option down here which you're going to see quite a few times. You will have seen it a few times already and that is sample all layers. It's actually a very important option even if you don't use it that often. By default tools like the spot healing brush only operate on the currently active layer. So in this case with the dog's face just on one layer, just a background layer of the image, it's only applied to that layer. But if you have a situation where an image is built up in layers and the fix or change that you want to do is actually made up of content on a number of visible layers then depending on what you're doing you may need to check that sample all layers box so that the action you're taking is going to be applied to all visible layers. Now there are various tools that this will be important for including the healing brush and the spot healing brush but also some of the tools that we'll see later on like the clone stamp and sharpening tools and so on. So having explained quite a bit more now about the spot healing brush and bearing in mind what I'm going to explain a little bit later on in this section about the healing brush when you get a chance just have a go at getting rid of that flare on the dog's left eye, the right eye as we look at it. I mentioned it earlier on in the course maybe now you could have a pretty good go at removing that. Now I'm going to deal with one of the other very common problems in photos and that's the need to remove wires and cables. In this case with the picture of the horses there is some fence wire across the picture that I'd like to get rid of. I can use the spot healing brush and wipe it across the wire. It should do the job. But one thing to be aware of when you're swiping, brushing with the brush you will tend to just meander around a little bit. It's extremely difficult to follow a wire very accurately. And for this reason, people tend to make the brush size quite a bit bigger than the width of the wire. Now, the problem with that is that the larger you have the brush size, the more sort of peripheral damage you make. So it's really a good idea to keep the brush still as small as you can get away with try to keep your hand as steady as you can and sometimes it's best to aim to remove a wire like this one with a number of shorter steps so maybe just a quarter of the wire each time I'm going to try to do this one in one go I've got create texture selected so let me just check the brush size that's really not big enough let me right square bracket it up a little bit from there now I think that's probably going to be big enough. I'm going to start at one end and I'm going to swipe along in one go. Some people try to do it quickly. I tend to do it slowly because I can be more accurate. If you've got very good accurate hands you might be able to do it more quickly than I do. Well, it's not that accurate but it might do. Don't worry about the thick back line. When I release the mouse yeah, it's pretty much gone actually. There's the faintest trace here and there, but I think that's a pretty good job and I'd probably get away with that. Now, if you leave me with a moment, I'm just going to get rid of the other pieces of wire in the same way. Now there we are. It's not perfect, but if you didn't know there used to be a piece of wire there, you probably wouldn't guess that there had been. Now I want to finish this section by looking at the healing brush and this works in a fundamentally different way to the spot healing brush. With the healing brush what we do is to take a sample of what we want to replace an object by and replace the object by that sample and very often we'll do this in a number of steps. The object I want to get rid of is that bit of fence post in the bottom right hand corner. So let's zoom in on that and there are a number of ways in which you can use the healing brush. One of them is to, if you like, sort of dab over the object that you want to get rid of with a sequence of samples, or you can do it with one or more areas of the image that are already there that you're basically sort of cloning, really. Let me, let me show you that second approach. First of all, I need to make sure that I've got the right size of brush selected. I want something that's going to pretty much go over the post so that should do the job 
and then if you want to copy a sequence of pixels from a point in the image to cover in this case that bit of post if you check on aligned it will copy a sequence from the existing picture as you drag over the object you want to hide. If you don't check aligned, then what it does is it uses a sample from the initial sampling point over and over again. Now, in this case, I've checked aligned. I'm going to hold the Alt key down, and with the Alt key held down, I'm going to click on a starting point. You can see where the cursor is. That's the starting point for the part of the image I'm going to use. So I click there. Now what I do is swipe down the post. And basically what PSE is going to do is to take the pixels from the initial sampling point and duplicate those, clone those, as I wipe down over the post. Now you'll probably realize when you think of where I clicked just now that there aren't going to be enough pixels to cover this in one go and it will run out when it gets to the equivalent of the bottom of the picture. Just see that happening here. So click, start to swipe and you'll see that as I've swiped down when the crosshair got to the bottom of the picture it ran out of pixels and it can no longer clone over the stump. So what I can do is to do a second one let me again hold the Alt key down, maybe click there as a start point. Now let me swipe along the bottom of the post, the remaining bit, it's copied those pixels, and there we are. So with a combination of swiping like that, perhaps sampling and dabbing, you can come up with some replacement pixels that pretty much completely obscure the post. Let me go back into fit on screen view. I don't think anybody would guess there was ever a post there. That's the end of this section. I'll see you in the next one. Hey everyone, Simon here. Thanks for watching. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe to our channel. And click over there to get a free three hour course for learning the essentials of Photoshop Elements 2018. And click over there to get the complete list of videos in this playlist. I'll see you next week with additional videos.